In this lesson on linear functions today, we're going to be looking at transforming the graphs of linear functions. Now for this, as with new concepts often, we will start out with a large list of vocabulary and then apply that vocabulary into specific work. So let's start with family of functions. And this is simply a group of functions that share similar characteristics. Now what we've been working with has been linear functions, so we will be looking at linear families. When we look more specifically at a function, a family of functions, we come to the parent function. And this is the most basic function in a family. Now, for linear, our most basic function is f of x equals x. It has a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 0. So when we start making alterations to our parent function, this is what we always compare to. Now, Next up is transformations. And transformations, when we're talking about graphing, is any change to the basic form of the function. Um, transformations can be reflections, they can be rotations, they can be translations, they can be stretches. And we will look at each of these in turn, but all of them talk about transformations. In math, often you're asked what transformations have happened to the parent function. It means, how does this one look or behave differently? So the first of our transformations we'll be looking at is the translation. A translation of a function is a shift in location of the function to a new position on the graph. We have seen these in the past with our linear functions as we've changed the location of the y-intercept. So that will be a good basis for talking about translations. Our other major one is reflection. And this is a flip of a function over a line. Uh, typically, when we do reflections, uh, we're flipping it over the x-axis. That would be flipping it up and down. Or flipping it across the y-axis, and that would be flipping it from right to left. There is one other term. Uh, let me throw on here real quick. And that is a stretch or a shrink. And this is a change in length of a function. Typically, in graphing, what we're going to be doing is, is stretching or shrinking vertically, but it is possible, and we will discuss a little today, about doing stretches and shrinks horizontally in order to achieve different features of our function. So a lot of vocabulary, a lot of different terms. Now let's go through and work with some of these and see how it applies and how we can notate those changes. The first thing we're going to look at is translations. So when we do translations to a graph, our main function that we're going to be building off of is y equals f of x. Now, when we do y equals f of x, if we need to move things left and right, inside of the parentheses with our x, we're going to put a minus h. Now, Inside of any group, when x is involved, that group wants to be 0. So in order to find out direction of change and magnitude, how far it changed, we simply need to figure out what x value will make it equal 0. Next, if we need a vertical change, we will have on the outside a plus k value. That k will move us up and down exactly as it looks. So if k is positive, it moves our function up. If it's negative, it moves it down. And for these movements, we are talking about our starting location. For instance, k would be a good example of our y-intercept, which moves us up and down the y-axis. So if g of x is our parent function f of x moved left 3, well, on my number line, if I throw a quick one in here, zeros in the middle, positives are to the right, negatives are to the left. So g of x equals f of x, now I need to go left 3. So h is my horizontal movement. As we see up here, it's grouped in with x. So I'm going to have x minus, and 
left is negative, so I'm going to be subtracting a negative 3. If I now simplify this function, considering f of x is simply x, I get g of x is equal to x minus a negative 3 is x plus 3. This will move my function left 3 in graphing. Now, let's take a look at this for h of x. h of x is my parent function, f of x, being moved down 2. Now, for a vertical system, if 0 is in the middle, up is positive, down is negative. So my h of x is going to equal f of x minus 2, and that minus 2 is outside of the parentheses. So what I end up with is x minus 2. And thinking about that in terms of our y-intercept location, we are simply moving down two spots on our y-intercept. Next up, what if our family of functions is 2x plus 1, and I want to move up 7? So using similar idea, uh, g of x equals f of x, up 7 is a k value, that move is our vertical translation, so outside of the parentheses I'm going to add 7. Now because we have a more involved function family here, my g of x is going to be whatever f of x is, 2x plus 1, and to that I'm going to add 7. Uh, getting rid of my parentheses because they're not really doing anything here, and then adding 7, g of x will be 2x plus 8. And that's my translation. h of x, as we look at it, is moving right 5. So h of x equals f of x. And if I'm moving right 5, right is positive. And so my h is going to be a positive 5. So I'll have f of x minus a positive 5 as my h of x. So that means when I take my f equation, 2, I'm going to have x minus 5 in my parentheses, then plus 1 because that's the rest of f. Distributing, I get 2x minus 10 plus 1. So my end function will be 2x minus 10. 9. And that will be my parent function moved right 5 units. So that last one, the h of x, when we have other things happening, is a bit more confusing. We have more items happening at one time. So if you need to look through that or ask about it, please do so. Please take the time to learn that material. So all this has been translations of functions, moving left and right or moving up and down. What we're going to look at next will be any vertical uh, stretches or shrinks as we work through these functions. So stretches and reflections. If my function family is f of x equals a negative one-third x plus two, we have to worry or learn about our stretches and reflections. First we're going to work on reflections. So my main form here, y equals a f of b x. Now a is outside of my parentheses, so it's going to affect y values, vertical items. b is inside of my parentheses, it's going to affect horizontal or x items. If a is negative, it will flip my uh, line vertically. So everything below the line, the x-axis will move above, everything above the x-axis will move below. My b, because it's inside, will flip left and right. So anything on the left side of the y-axis will be moved to the right, right side will be moved to the left. So if g of x is being reflected over that x-axis, then I have that g of x 
reflected over x, that's our a value, so it equals simply a negative f of x. Now what this means is I have negative everything in the function. If I distribute that negative sign, I get g of x equals one-third x minus two. And that is my final function for g. It's all the characteristics of the function family of f simply reflected over that x-axis. Now h of x I'm going to say is reflection over the y-axis. So anything reflecting over y is inside of my group. So h of x equals f of negative x. So what that means in my function is I have a negative one-third times negative x plus two. As I simplify this, a negative one-third times a negative x is simply one-third x plus two. And that will reflect my values left and right across that y-axis. So now we go to vertical and horizontal stretching. To vertically stretch an item, A has to be greater than zero. Or, sorry, A has to be greater than one in order to stretch it. In order to shrink it, it needs to be between zero and one. In order to do a horizontal stretch, B would have to be between 0 and 1. And to horizontally shrink something, B would have to be greater than 1. Anything inside of that grouping symbol with x is what we call counterintuitive. It goes against what you would think. So putting these into application, g of x vertically stretched is my f of x vertically stretched by 5. So my function family f of x is 3 halves x minus 7. g of x is going to be 5 times f of x. And that is simply 5 times 3 halves x minus 7, which is going to be 15 halves x minus 35. This will take the entire graph of f and make it five times taller on that y-axis. Well, what about h of x? h of x is a horizontal stretch of f of x by a factor of three. So h of x, in order to get that horizontal stretch, my b has to be between zero and one. So if I'm doing a factor of three, then it'd be f of one-third x. Substituting in values, I get 3 halves times 1 third x minus 7. 3 halves times 1 third is 3 six, also known as 1 half x minus 7. So we can horizontally stretch and shrink. We can vertically stretch and shrink. We can vertically reflect. We can horizontally reflect. We can move everything around in different forms. So just a quick recap. My function, my parent setup, is going to be based off of y equals f of x. Now we can do changes and alterations to this. We can do a times f of x plus k. A and k move and manipulate my function vertically. And I can say y equals a f of bx minus h plus k. That b and that h affect it horizontally. A plays the jobs of vertical stretch or shrink and reflect. K 
is vertical translation or movement. B is my horizontal stretch or shrink. and reflection, and K, or sorry, H is my horizontal translation. If this is a little bit new and confusing, it does start that way, but you'll get the hang of it. We'll be using this moving forward as we start looking at other types of functions and other graphs that are out there. So have these basic ideas, put them in notes where you can get at them easy, and we will use them and get to know them through that use.